Okay, so in this problem we're told a stunt driver wants to make his car jump over eight cars parked side by side below a horizontal ramp. A, with what minimum speed must he drive off the horizontal ramp? The vertical height of the ramp is 1.5 meters above the cars and the horizontal distance he must clear is 22 meters. B, if the ramp is now tilted upward so that the takeoff angle is seven degrees above the horizontal, what is the new minimum speed? So I went ahead and drew what we have going on here. So we have this car. And we know he's going to try and jump over these eight cars and he's got to basically clear them. And so we know these, the distance between where he jumps off and here is 1.5 meters and the distance he has to travel is 22 meters. So we're doing a kinematics problem like this. And the way I always like to start off is by writing down my variables. So I like to write given, and then I know this is two dimensional. So I like to write my given in the X and I'm also going to have to write the given in the Y since we're dealing with two dimensions here. So now I'm going to write down all my variables. So we have the initial velocity in the X. We have the final velocity in the X. We have the acceleration in the X time. And then we have the change in the X. So these are your five variables that you work with when you do kinematics. And I think it's just important to write them out like this just because they make it easier to solve. Okay. So we've got all our variables written out now. And so what I like to do now is determine which ones I have. So I know that from here to here, so from the beginning of our interval to the end, the change in X is going to have to be equal to 22 meters because that's how far he's going to have to clear. So we know that. And then the initial velocity in the X, I don't know. That's what they're asking us to find. The minimum speed he must drive off, right? So this is the beginning, the initial velocity in the X. That's what we're solving for. But what you should notice is that they tell us he drives off horizontally. And so... Uh, since he's doing that, uh, since he's just going off like this, I know that the initial velocity in the Y is zero. And the reason that is, is if you're driving horizontally, you're not moving at all in the Y. So I know the initial velocity in the Y is zero meters per second. So the final velocity in the X and the final velocity in the Y, we don't know either of those. So I can just, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cross it out like that. And then acceleration in the X and acceleration in the Y. So whenever you do a problem like these, Generally, the acceleration in the X is zero unless it's an extreme circumstance or they tell you because there's no acceleration in the X, it's just zero. So the acceleration in the X is zero because the gravity only affects you in the Y direction. So uh, you should know that the acceleration in the Y for these problems are always acceleration due to gravity, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The negative just indicates downwards. The time we don't know either. So I don't know the time in either, uh, either of these yet, but I'm going to leave it open because we're going to write it in later. Um, and then delta y. So what's our change in the y? So we start here and we end here. So the change in the y is going to be negative 1.5 meters because we decrease our height by uh, 1.5 meters. The negative just indicates downwards. So now I've got my uh, given and I have all my variables written. And so generally the way these problems work is... Um, I know I'm going to be solving for the initial velocity in the X. And so since I know that, um, I know I'm going to need another variable here because generally you need three variables in order to solve a kinematic equation. And I know I'm not going to be able to solve for the initial or the final velocity in the X. So I know I'm going to need to get time and I can get time. If I solve this one, uh, the, the Y equation, I can get the time uh, from this one and then plug it in here. And then I can solve for uh, the initial velocity in the X. So we're going to use the Y in order to find that. So looking at my three variables, I know I only need three to solve an equation. And I try and decide which equation to use. And the equation we're going to use is this one here. So let me write that in, moving this down a bit. So the equation we're going to use is delta Y equals the initial velocity in the Y times T plus one half a t squared so this is probably the most common kinematic equation and this is the one we're going to use so why we're using this we know delta y we know the initial velocity in the y and uh, we know the acceleration in the y so the only variable left is t and that's what i wanted to solve for so i'm gonna plug it in here um so now it's just a matter of plugging in the variables so minus 1.5 equals v sub zero y is zero so zero times anything this whole term just goes to zero so i'm actually not going to write it so we just have one half times a which is minus 9.8 times t squared cool so uh just uh, multiplying this out a bit 
uh, one half times minus 9.8 is minus 4.9. So we have minus 4.9 t squared, uh, dividing both sides by minus 4.9. Uh, you're going to get, when you do this, uh, actually, let's just square root it too. So uh, these obviously are going to go away. They're going to cancel. So we have t squared equals 1.5 over 4.9. Square rooting both sides to just to get t by itself. Uh, you're going to get that it, uh, t, let me just move it over a bit. t is equal to the square root of 1.5 divided by 4.9. Okay, cool. So when you do this, you're going to get T equals 0.553. And so 0.553, and obviously time is in seconds since we're using standard units. So now we know the time. So let me write it up here. 0.553 sec seconds. Uh, plugging in here too, 0.553 seconds. And now I know T. So uh, as I said before, we have the three variables and we can solve. So once again, we're going to use the same formula we used here, but in the x direction. So delta x is equal to v sub 0 x times t plus 1 half a sub x t squared. But what you should notice is there's no acceleration in the x. Therefore, this term goes to zero. So the, the distance we travel is equal to... Uh, the velocity, initial velocity times t. And so if we know how far we need to travel in a certain amount of time, we know what the, um, the velocity that we need to uh, be, right? The velocity is just constant because it does, there's no acceleration. So the initial velocity equals delta x divided by t. So uh, delta x we said was 22, dividing it by 0.553. Uh, and I'm going to use the exact value I have in my calculator you're going to get 39.76. And this is velocity, so we're using meters per second as our units. Um, and yeah, so you can round to 40 or however you want to do it. I'm going to say 40 meters per second here. Uh, and yeah, so this is going to be the velocity we need to leave with. So just a rundown of uh, how we did this. Uh, you always want to split, or when you write down your given, you want to write it in two different things. So your X and your Y, and then you're going to want to uh, you look at one of the equations, generally it's your y, so you want to look at your y variables in order to solve for the time. So that's all we did. We noticed we needed time in order to solve this, so we used it from this equation. And notice time, obviously, isn't bound to either direction because it doesn't have a direction. It's a scalar quantity, so uh, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense, and that's your answer to A. So let's move on to uh, B now, so let's go ahead and do B. Okay, so in part B, they're asking us if the ramp is now tilted upward so that the takeoff angle is 7 degrees above the horizontal, what is the new minimum speed? So we're going to be solving for the initial velocity again. But in this case, the thing that's changing is our takeoff angle. So now we're going to be taking off at an angle that is 7 degrees above this horizontal. So 7 degrees above this. So now what we want to think about is what actually changes in our problem. So I'm going to do the given again over here. Let me zoom out a bit. So we have given in the x and the y again. So v sub 0 x, let me write these all out again. v sub x, a sub x, t, and delta x. It's always good to write these out whenever you do a problem just because it's helpful. So a sub y, t, and delta y. So now let's think about what changes. So I know that since we're leaving at an angle now, uh, obviously the initial velocity is going to change. And since it's at an angle, we know there's going to be a component in the x and the y. So no longer is the y zero. So these are both question mark. We don't know. Okay, so let me zoom out a bit. Um, once again, we don't know the final velocity in the x. Uh, the acceleration in the x is still zero meters per second squared. In this one, in the y, it's still minus 9.8 that doesn't change the time we still don't know and then delta x is still 22 and delta y is still minus 1.5 really the only thing that changes is this v sub 0 x so this problem is actually going to be a little bit more difficult because uh, because of how uh, it's structured so i think the easiest way is just to see how you solve it and then go back and look about uh, how that is so we know that if we look at the equation in the x, right, v sub 0 x, 
The way we're going to do it is by subbing in, because you notice we only have two variables for each, so we can't actually solve for one. So the way we're going to do it is by plugging in um, a, an equation into another one, because we only have two variables. Okay, so uh, the way we do that is by doing this equation here. So we know that the... Um, so if you look at it like this, delta x equals v, v sub 0 x times t plus 1 half a sub x times t squared. Okay, so this tells us that delta x equals v sub 0 x times t because this is still 0. Okay, but what is the initial velocity in the x? So the initial velocity in the x, since we're leaving at an angle, so if you look at this, we're t we, we want to write the x component as its uh, magnitude. So how do we do that? So we want to split it into a triangle like this. Let me show you. Okay, so imagine this is like this. So this is our triangle here. This is what we leave at. So imagine this right here is 7 degrees. I know it doesn't really look like it, but you're just going to imagine. This is V sub 0. Right, this is the velocity that we leave at, and then these are the x component, and this is the y component. Okay, and we want to find the y comp x component in terms of this. So how do we do that? So you should know that the cosine of an angle is equal to uh, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So v sub 0 x over v sub 0. So multiplying both sides, you get v sub 0 times the cosine of uh, 7 degrees in this case. So we're going to rewrite this as uh, v sub 0 cosine, and I'm just going to use theta for now because we know what it is, but it's just easier to write it that way, times t. And keep in mind, we want to put this in terms of t, and you'll see why in a second. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So t equals delta x over v sub 0 cosine of theta. Okay, cool. So now that we've got it in that form, what we're going to want to do is now plug it into the y equation. So the formula in the y we know is going to be delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. So notice all these are in the y. And so what we're going to do here is plug in uh, t as uh, this value right here, but we also need to write the y in terms of uh, v sub 0. And it's going to be able to cancel that's y. So let's go ahead and do that. So how do we find v sub 0 y? So just like we did here with cosine, let me zoom in a bit. Just like we did here with cosine, we're just going to do sine this time. So the sine of an angle, in this case, we'll just write 7 because we did that last time, but uh, is equal to sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So v sub 0, y over v sub 0, multiplying both sides. All that changes is sine. So when you do y, you use sine. When you do x, you do cos. So now we can replace this in here. So we have delta y equals v sub 0 sine of 7. Or sorry, I'm going to use theta again. And then t, we can plug in t. So t was delta x over v sub 0 cosine of theta plus 1 half a sub y times uh, t, which is delta x over v sub 0 cos of theta. So I accidentally made a mistake in the video. I just want to explain uh, how we got to this line. But um, basically, v sub 0 over v sub 0, they're going to cancel and then sine over cosine becomes tangent. So you need to know that sine over cosine is equal to tangent. And then, yeah, so I just rewrote the line right here, and uh, let's continue. And so this is going to be squared. And then, so now that we've got it like this, all we really have to do is just plug in the values. So we know delta y from the initial problem is, uh, what's the change in the y? Minus 1.5, right? We wrote it here. We know theta, we know delta x, we know a sub y. So really, it's just a matter of plugging in now. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, as I said before, delta y is minus 1.5 equals the tangent of the angle, which in this case is our launch angle, right? So theta, which was uh, 7 degrees, right? And we, we have that in our triangle right up here. So tangent of 7 times delta x, which was 22, plus 1 half times... Uh, a sub y, which is minus 9.8, times uh, 22 squared divided by v sub 0 times the cosine of uh, 7. So actually, let me get rid of the squared and put it out here like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is simplify. So we have the tangent of 7 times 22 
So let me rewrite this. Minus 1.5 is equal to 2.7. So I'm just going to 2.70. Uh, and then minus 4.9. And then, because that's what 1 half times minus 9.8 is. Uh, and then 22 squared. Uh, let's just do this. So 22 squared is... Or sorry, let's just do 22 divided by the cosine of 7. And then all we got to do is square that value. And then multiply it by the minus 4.9. So uh, this is actually minus 2407.35. And then you're dividing by the v sub 0 squared. So this is just basic al algebra. All we're doing is simplifying it. Uh, and then now what we want to do is... Uh, minus this 2.70 to the other side. So minus 1.5 minus 2.70 minus 4.2 is equal to minus 2407.35 divided by v sub 0 squared. So all we got to do is multiply both sides by the initial velocity squared, and then you would divide by uh, minus 4.2. So you're going to get v sub 0 squared equals minus 2407.35, and you're dividing by minus 4.2. Okay, cool. Now these minus signs are going to cancel, and then to get rid of the square, you would square root both sides. So do that. So v sub 0 is the square root of this value, so let me go ahead and plug that in. So 2407.35 divided by 4.2. And so, yeah, you're going to get 23.94, and this is going to be meters per second, since we're talking about velocity. So about 24 meters per second, that's going to be the initial velocity. So keep in mind what they were asking us for. They wanted us, right, the minimum speed. So this would be the minimum speed, let's just say 24 meters per second. The minimum speed for us to be able to make this jump if we now launch at an angle of seven degrees versus the first one which was just horizontal so yeah the main takeaway for this one is notice how we only had two variables and that basically indicates we're going to be plugging something in so what we did was solve for t and then we made sure uh, to cancel out v sub zero x and v sub zero y by just uh, putting it in its magnitude form so uh, yeah and then we just subbed in and solved so hopefully that made sense but yeah so your answer for B is 24 meters per second right here. And this right here was your answer to A. But yeah, so uh, those are going to be your answers. And uh, hopefully you found this useful.